Hello, I'm David Epworth, and this is my new book, or a proof of my new book, Overpaid, Oversexed, and Over There. It's about British acts in the United States from 1963 to 1983. As you'll appreciate, usually when you've got a new book out, it's customary to go and talk at literary festivals or maybe in bookshops to meet readers, sign copies, and so forth. As you'll appreciate, that's pretty difficult in the current situation and so what I hope to do as a bit of a substitute is using the miracle of this platform to do a series of stories, observations, vignettes about the period covered by the book and also offer those people who want it the opportunity to get a signed copy. Uh, more details of that later on. First, on with the show. <laughs> In pop music, it generally pays to be first. But if the act who happen to be first are as exceptional as the Beatles, it can pay almost as much to be second. When the Beatles were just arriving back in the UK after their riotously successful first visit to the United States, the Dave Clark Five were just shipping out and they were the immediate beneficiaries of the sensation that the Beatles had caused. We're fond of saying that pop music nowadays moves far more quickly than it ever did in the past. This is simply not true. If you want to see how untrue it is, just look at the Dave Clark Five's experience that week when they first went to America. It was the first time they'd been on a plane. It was the first time they'd stayed in a hotel. That week they turned professional and they played the first of 19 appearances on the Ed Sullivan Show, as a consequence of which they became an absolute sensation in the United States. There are three interesting things, I think, about the Dave Clark Five. One that's often forgotten is they were, in many senses, Britain's first indie group. Although their records came out on EMI, they came out on EMI because Dave Clark had paid for making them himself and he licensed them to EMI. So he continued to own them, which is something that couldn't be said of the overwhelming majority of the groups who went to America during the British invasion. So it's difficult to say who made most money, but it's not difficult to say who kept most of it, and that would be the Dave Clark Five, because they were managed by Dave during that period of enormous success. They were also very popular in the United States, arguably more popular in the United States than they were in Britain. Some of that may be down to the fact that they had a saxophone in their lineup, which was quite rare in Britain at the time, and they learned much of their trade playing American Air Force bases in East Anglia and learning the latest hits on the jukebox. And therefore, they were always able to uh, purvey that kind of frat house sound that is particularly po popular in the United States. And finally, because they were really popular in the United States, they were never quite loved in the UK in the way they might have expected. They were the first of many groups to suffer from a faint resentment in the old country about having made it in the new and the bigger country. That's a completely irrational thing. But irrational things are what happens when you combine people's feelings about pop music with their feelings about their country. If you've ordered my book, either online or via your local bookshop, Please get in touch with me via the email underneath this and send me your address and I'll be happy to send you a signed, customised book plate that you can put inside it. Thanks very much.